Space is known as the final frontier, but there are parts of this planet we're still learning about too. In fact, while only two dozen people have flown to the moon, as of this month, even fewer have ever traveled to the deepest known point of the ocean. That would be Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, close to seven miles below sea level. My next guest is one of them. Whalen resident Rob McCallum is an ocean explorer and a founding partner of the company EOS Expeditions. Rob, it's a pleasure to meet you. Ah, the pleasure's mine. Thanks for having me. So to put this in perspective, you went quite a bit further down into the ocean than fellow New Zealander had to go to Edmund Hillary, of course, to reach the top of Mount Everest with uh, Tenzing Norgay. We know how dangerous his effort was. How dangerous was yours? You know, it's it's all relative. Uh, we are contained within a titanium sphere um, that's about six feet across. And so the pressure is all on the outside of the sphere. Uh, inside the, the hull of the vehicle, we're not subjected to any physiological stress that the, uh, the mountain climbers would have been subjected to. So but I had an easy run compared to Sir Edmund. But when you say an easy run, there's also a psychological part of this. I read that, hope, tell me if I got this right, I don't even know what this means, 20,000 uh, uh, pounds of pressure per square inch. Is that a correct description of what you encounter as you go down? At the depth that uh, we're operating at, it's about 16,500 uh, PSI, so pounds per square inch, which when you think about your, your car tire has a pressure of around 35 pounds. I mean, the pressure is immense. To, to put it into lay terms, just on the hatch uh, that we get in and out of the vehicle um, from, uh, there's the weight of about 2,200 tonnes. So that's, that's akin to five fully laden uh, Boeing 747s. It's an immense amount of pressure. Yeah, I'd say so. Why'd you do this? You know, this is the last frontier of exploration on Earth. I mean, from here, we uh, go to Mars. In fact, we're taking our first baby steps on, on Mars, and yet we have this vast part of our planet, uh, the Hadal Zone, that's the, um, the ocean below 20,000 feet, that we've scarcely visited. Are you as calm when you're doing this as you are right now? <laughs> I'm serious, by the way. Uh, yes, I, uh, yes, it's a, it's a trait. I mean, it's, um, you know, we, we, we say don't get frightened, just think faster. Um, because there are a lot of things going on and you can only manage them if you're thinking clearly. So it's, there's no need to panic. We trust in the engineering, we trust in the math, and uh, we trust in the science. So I believe where you went is called in the Hadal zone. Am I right? And I believe it's named after Hades appropriately. Can you describe to us mere mortals who maybe go knee deep on a, an adventurous day? What is it like down there? You know, for me, it's immensely calming. I mean, you can't hear anything outside the, the vehicle because the, uh, the hull is, is so um, thick. Uh, you can only hear the sound of your own breathing and the whir of the computer. Um, so it's a, and there's no sensation of movement. So it's a very relaxing place to be. Yet at the same time, you never know what's going to come into view next. And so what you're looking at on screen there are these sulfur mounds, which until our dive, no one had any idea actually occurred uh, at these depths. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, uh, place to be. It's both relaxing yet immensely exciting. What's going to come into view next? What kind of life exists down there? Uh, there are no uh, fish below um, around uh, 28,000 feet. Because of the pressure? Uh, because of the pressure. It's not possible for, um, for uh, animals to grow um, stru structure as, as we know it. But there is life uh, on, on the bottom. And the stuff that we're really interested in is this bacterial matting, which is a very primitive form of life. Uh, there is some thought that this is actually where life itself began. But the reason it's interesting is because it's uh, what we call an extremophile. It's an organism which is able to survive extremely hostile environments. And that's the kind of life that uh, Percy up on Mars is looking for and eventually will look for um, further out in the galaxy. So what value might there be 
to me and the rest of this planet uh, of what you and people like you learn at seven miles down in the Mariana Trench? I, I say to people that we know so little about this environment that we barely understand what questions we should be asking, let alone have the ability to, to understand the answers. I mean, we will learn the last little bit uh, of the um, key to evolution by understanding how this life survives uh, in extreme uh, conditions. We will learn a little bit about how our planet was formed. We may find useful compounds, particularly medical compounds in the deep. We may start to crack the riddle of how we're going to reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. We may uh, learn a lot more about the dynamics of our ocean. There is so much to learn, uh, and yet we're, we're sort of in the – where, where I went, um, you know, less than 20 people have been, and 24 people have orbited the moon. So we're really at the dawn of exploration. So you used the word calm twice, but can you describe further? I can't even imagine what it must be like when you actually get there. And you know, as you say, you're a place where fewer than two dozen humans have ever gone. You're at the deepest part of the ocean. Can you describe just a little bit more what you feel like inside when you get to that point? It's, um, it's, it's three phases to the, to the journey. Uh, the launch and the voyage down uh, take around four, four and a half hours. And during that time, we are rehearsing uh, the, the sort of final dress rehearsal, if you like, of what we're going to do on the bottom. And we're doing that because it, it costs such a lot of money and takes such a huge investment of time and effort to get people there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to waste a single minute of that uh, time on the bottom. Once we're on the bottom, we're very busy. We're running through all the mission objectives. We're carrying out all our tasks. And then once we leave, it's pure elation. Uh, you know, we are so pleased to have done uh, the mission. It's time to kick back, relax, fly the flags, um, and chat about um, what we're going to do with all the information that we've picked up. And I say you're so thrilled with your teammate there, who I'm told is Australian, that you're actually willing to eat the worst food in the world, a Vegemite sandwich. Is that correct? The worst. That's, that's correct. It's something that really only Australasians understand. Um, but it was a fantastic moment for both of us because New Zealand and Australia have a, an extremely close uh, relationship. And for both of us to be on this voyage together was, was uh, the trip of a lifetime, literally. Rob, congratulations. Uh, it's really thrilling, and I'm really glad to hear about it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Pleasure.